Hello YouTube and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls lore video. Today we're talking about a topic that was requested a lot after the last video on the Lilmothid, the Kothringi human tribes. As you will see in this video, the two races have a lot of similarities and thus this video might be a little short. That said, let's dive right in. The Cathringa humans, just like the Lilmothid, are one of the extinct races of Black Marsh. Unlike the Lilmothid, however, we can actually encounter them in an Elder Scrolls game, in the Elder Scrolls Online. And in addition to that, we also have a lot more solid information on the Cathringi than we do on the Lilmothid. There's a lot less guessing in them. The story of the Cathringi humans begins back in the Meretic era, back before even the Nidic humans migrated to Tamriel from Edmora, or before the Altmer elves had landed on Tamriel. Back in these days, Tamriel was inhabited by only a few races, mostly beast races like the Argonians and the Khajiit, but there was actually also a human race native to southern Tamriel, the Cuthringi. They lived primarily in Black Marsh around this time, and they are known to have strange metallic colored skin. These Cuthringi humans are most likely descendants of the wandering Elnofe, the far off ancestors of the human races who got isolated on Tamriel after the Elnofe wars, and they ended up evolving into this strange metallic skinned human race. They were very tribally organized and were notoriously underdeveloped compared to their cousins on Edmora and Yokuna. Therefore, their actions have only had a very small impact on the grand scale of things as they got overshadowed on southern Tamriel by the already existing Khajiiti kingdoms and elsewhere and the Argonian and Mir society in Black Marsh. Because the Quateringi society remained in a tribal state for basically the most of its existence, while other races such as the Argonians and the Khajiit, but later also the Elves and the Needs, developed their own societies, the Quateringi remained tribal, with little organized elements in their society. This caused their society to be relatively small and underdeveloped for most of its history. Most of the lore that we do have on their tribes, before the Raymond Empire took over Black Marsh, pertains to their tribal way of life. For example, in previously established lore it's mentioned a few times how the Quatringi preferred to live without clothes, living their lives naked and less traveling to other cultures. We don't know whether they just removed this part of the lore, as in the Elder Scrolls Online we can still encounter a surviving Quatringi tribe who mostly wear simple tribal garbs. Or if it's just this simple tribe that actually wears garbs, or if they just removed it at all. The Kothringi mostly lived in simple villages made out of simple huts with thatched roofs with tribal totems dotting their villages as we can see in the Elder Scrolls Online. The tribes have a very traditional tribal structure as they are usually headed by a chieftain who is aided by a shaman in religious matters and a war chief in matters of war. They are, as far as we know, the original worshippers of Ze'en, the god of toil, and it's said that the Kothringi sailors and fishermen were the ones who spread the worship of this god around southern Tamriel, most notably Valenwood. Next to Zen, their pantheon of gods is largely unknown, but we do know that it consists of both Adra and Daedra, since Clavicus Vile is part of the pantheon. Next to Zen and Clavicus Vile, we also know from out-of-game texts that they worship three gods called the Mothers of the Roundus, which consists out of Mara, Dibay and Kin. The latter two of which are aspects of Debella and Kinerath, and of course Mara is the first one, but it's called Mara. But these are claims made by out-of-game texts, not officially released by Bethesda, so do take them with a grain of salt. That said, only in the tail end of their existence they started to partially develop and organize when the Riemann Empire took over the province of Black Marsh. During this period they helped the Riemann Empire occupy the province and held administration over some significant cities and provided soldier garrisons to several cities. Some Quatringi actually held a quite distinguished position within the Empire, as a Quatringi named Zook was a guard to Riemann III's wife and helped actually in the assassination of Riemann III. Under the Riemann Empire they may have prospered for a short period of time, but unfortunately almost all of their society was completely wiped out by the Carnarthen flu, which raced through the province of Black Marsh during the late middle of the Second Era. Their society completely collapsed and within a few years their society had almost been completely wiped out and by the year 583 of the second era, the year the Elder Scrolls Online takes place in, there's almost nothing left of their society. A few Kutringi survived, uh, most notably the tribe living in Stillrise village. They were cursed with immortality by Clavicus Vile and thus surviving the flu. But I talked about that topic extensively in my video on the curse of Stillrise village. 
So, if you wish to know more about either Stillrise Village, which houses the largest band of surviving Katringi, or you wish to know more about the Kanantan flu that I talked about, the disease that completely wiped their society out, just as it did the Lilmothet society, I recommend you watch my video on that topic. While I'd love to talk about these topics here, I'd be repeating myself, and I could not talk about those topics in the same details as I can there, so if you wish to know more, they're only like two clicks away, so I'll leave links in the description and in the eye icons above. That said, I do wish to thank you for watching this video, and before I end things, allow me to thank my top patrons, Bernardo Binda, Gabriel Binda, Mr. Para, and Mr. Christmas. These guys, along with all the other patrons on screen right now, make it possible for me to sacrifice the time needed to make all these videos, and for that, I'm very grateful. That said, it's time for me to head off and start working on Friday's video. It's a lot more work than I imagined it to be, hence this short sort of in-between video. If you enjoyed this one, I hope to see you there when the next lore video launches next Friday. Bye-bye.